With us today is Richard LeBlain, who's from Australia, and he was recently here to World Improvement Ministries, and he's going to tell us a little bit about what he's seen, and, uh, and what, what did you, go ahead, Richard, what did you see? Well, um, we looked at a number of uh, devices, and of course I'm very excited about this, because I've been looking forward to this for a long time. But to be an eyewitness to some of the devices that Sir Timothy and his group of scientists and engineers have been involved in is just another level again. I was absolutely amazed. Uh, the uh, first invention we saw was the delay line uh, generator. Is that what it's called? Delay, yeah. delay line generator? Or, or sometimes it's called delay line motor. Delay line it's a motor, motor and yeah. a generator. So what I saw, first of all, uh, we measured the uh, open circuit voltage of the um, batteries that were there on the surface to power the device. Uh, and then, uh, having done that, we uh, you know, started the device and uh, just let it run for a while. So this, uh, we had some fluorescent tubes attached and they're, they're lighting up and of course the, the motor itself was running. So work was being done, it was obvious that work was being done. And uh, after a minute or so, uh, we stopped the device and measured the open circuit voltage of the battery pack again. and. Uh, now this seems like a small thing in one way, but an absolutely revolutionary thing in another way because the voltage of that battery pack had gone up. Work had been done and the voltage on the battery pack had gone up. So those batteries had charged while work was being done. Now, the implications for that are just blow the mind. Um, that was only a small scale device, but having seen that and, and having been able to inspect it, I, you know, I'm not a scientist or an engineer, but I am a, a qualified and experienced telecommunications technician. I'm not an idiot when it comes to electricity, basic electronics, um, electromagnetic induction, signal propagation and things of that type. So um, I can assure everyone who's watching this that there's no hidden batteries, no hidden wires, nothing under the bench or around the other side of the bench or anything like that. And uh, so just seeing, even on a small scale, that that's possible, the implications for the human race are just incredible. You need right. to explain what over-unity is. Okay, yeah, for those who don't, that's a good point. For those who don't understand over-unity, over-unity means that you put a certain amount of energy into the system, and if you get out over 100%, then that's over-unity. Uh, unity is 100%. Uh, so if you're, let's say, heat pump, for example, uh, we've been using those worldwide now for about 100 years, they've been mass produced probably for 50 years or 40 years, and they are typically over unity about 300 percent, or that. it varies depending on the temperature outside. They use a, a temperature gradient to produce their extra energy, whereas ours use uh, quantum energy or what's going on at a quantum level or a subatomic level. Uh, normal energy flows through the environment that uh, can be harnessed as well. And, uh, and then there's many different types of flows, not just electron flows. We're, we're used to electron flows, and some people think that's all there is, <laughs> but there's quite a bit more, uh, as, as Richard is learning. Uh, everybody knows about uh, a few more. Everybody knows about photons, uh, and everybody knows about uh, ions. Uh, I say everybody, a few people, you know. So these, these different types of flows can be used in different ways, and you can get extra energy in a system. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can. One of the things that's quite on the surface of it, simple but just amazing, is to, to see that one of the, the circuits in uh, Sir Timothy's uh, first device we looked at, it, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a rubber tube, uh, uh, an insulator, and we measured the resistance, and for practical purposes it had you know, virtually infinite resistance, but nevertheless there's a, a flow of an electricity-like uh, you know, uh, influence there, uh, which which yeah. I personally experienced by touching it. <laughs> yeah, you can touch the rubber hose and you feel the electricity. And yeah. it's, uh, there's no doubt that there's an electric light flow through the rubber, yeah. no problem. Well, there's yeah. not electrons. Not now, electrons. as you're familiar with Wilmhurst-type generators, you know that that type of energy will flow through insulators. And so there's, a, there's one example of one type of electricity that will flow through insulators. So uh, certain types of insulators. It collects on insulators in that type of system, and it flows off into them and off of them, and it will flow through them if you design the circuit to flow through them. And so that's, that's uh, one of the aspects of dominant energy is there's several, almost all the dominant fields will flow through insulators, uh, depending on what type of insulator it is and what frequency you're running at and so on. Mm. So it's, it's a different area of science. Uh, I have a, a good background in you know, mainstream 
in mainstream electronics and electricity and so forth, um, but the sorts of concepts that we're dealing with here are, are quite different to what's commonly taught, which yeah. agree in schools yeah. and, and in science courses and things, but, but it's not myth and magic. Uh, having um, spoken with Sir Timothy and, and, and read the works of other people involved in this area, it's hard science. It's yeah. no doubt about it all. It's no, absolutely I, hard science. I will add this, mm. that uh, places like China that are very technologically advanced and getting mm. more so all the time, uh, I have co-authored books that are being taught or going to be taught very soon in the, uh, in the schools over there, and uh, the college-level schools. And so it's, it may still be far out there for most people watching this video, but mm. for those in the know, it's not. And for those that understand uh, what's going on worldwide, uh, this is very up and coming, and it's new technology, it's cutting edge technology, and very soon uh, everybody will know about it. I would say within five or ten years, uh, everybody will be able to buy uh, many types of quantum energy systems, uh, in, in, uh, you know, maybe, from the, maybe from your local Walmart or whatever. Uh, so it's it is China is, is doing some pretty advanced things, and so is Japan, and there's a number of other countries as well. So it uh, <coughs> looks like the United States might be last on the list, but uh, mm. <laughs> it'll get here because they're making everything in, in China, so mm. it'll get here eventually. Yeah. Uh, and it originally developed here, as most people realize, approximately 200 years ago. Uh, it started 200 years ago, and Keeley and Tesla and so on uh, brought it further along, basically. Mm. Um, now, I think that pretty much covers everything, unless you wanted to comment on the gravity motor. Uh, Oh yes, uh, this is another area of um, technology that I hadn't been exposed to until recently is the idea of a, uh, a motor that works purely on uh, gravitation and centrifugal forces and once again it's one of these things that in the, in the mainstream view is utterly impossible but we did, uh, we did test a gravity motor and, uh, and I tested it as much as I could myself. Uh, uh, this particular design just involved a rolling a device along a, a flat surface and uh, I, uh, while, the, while the experience is a little bit subtle, um, I started this device and uh, pushed it to a certain speed and then completely relaxed in terms of adding any further, further force to it. And as far as I could tell personally, this thing has got enough, uh, produces enough power just to keep itself rolling without any input from the, the user, me in this case. And, that, so, and yeah. that's very typical of gravity yeah. motors. They'll yeah. have one speed they like, and they don't produce a lot of power, but mm. that's why we keep building them. We're, we're hoping to get a simple one that does produce a lot of power. And we have had complicated ones produce mm -hmm. a lot of power, but they're too complicated for most people to build. Mm -hmm. So we've got to have a simple one. If we're going to change the world with gravity motors, it's mm -hmm. got to be something simple that mm -hmm. uh, anybody can grasp the concepts pretty quickly and, uh, and will still produce usable, decent power. And, of course, the one you saw is still mm -hmm. just basically a demonstration model. Yeah, it's right. very little power, but it does... It does uh, everybody that's rolled it is convinced that it is keeping itself going at one speed. And uh, so it produces a, a small amount of power to overcome frictional losses, basically. That's it. And so, um, yeah, so that's great. Well, this is a Christian ministry. Uh, all your donations are tax donations are tax deductible. So we ask everybody to pray about it and give as the Lord leads your heart. And also, I'm a spokesman of the World Improvement to the Spirit Ministries. And so uh, any group, uh, hopefully 100 people, 200 people or bigger, uh, just if you want us to come speak, just get in contact with us by email. The email is WITS2014 and just email us there at yahoo.com, WITS2014 at yahoo.com. Email us there and uh, make a donation if you can and uh, we're, together we can change the world. And if, if nobody participates, it's hard to change the world, but if everybody does, it's easy to change the world. So we encourage everybody, donate, pray about it and donate what you can. And if you want us to speak to your church or you know any group that would like us to speak, uh, just, just send us an email and uh, we'll work it out. And please participate and let's make this world a better place.